Hi, so today we're going to carry on with this loose field of flowers that I started yesterday. As you can see, it dried beautifully. Yeah, there's a little bit of buckling and streaking at the bottom. But as I said, when you're doing something this loose, it, it doesn't really impact um, the outcome at the end of our work. So what we're going to be doing today... I'm going to be adding in some of the greens coming through to set the line of the field and the stems of the of the little flowers going up and I'll be adding in a couple of darker flowers and pinks um, so that we can see how they lie on top of the ink that we put down yesterday that flowed through so softly and just lift them out to the foreground because they're going to be so much darker and what I'd also like to do before I start any of that I'd like to push back um, my sky a little bit more and just give it another level of depth by adding another layer to it um, so we're going to start by looking at the palette again um, I have my trusty little sponge for lifting off um, it works well when it's a little wet. I have a little towel to clean my brushes. Today's brushes look a little different so I'm going to use my heavy bodied brush once again to carry water through in the larger areas where I want and then I have a very thin calligraphy brush and a Japanese writing brush that carries quite a lot of water and oh you paint for forever using that one but it ends in the most beautiful little tip so you can get many broader shapes and narrow shapes out of the same brush. My favorite brushes to work with actually are my Japanese calligraphy brushes. Love using them. So what we have as far as palette goes, we have the same palette I used yesterday, revitalized. So I put quite a lot of painting yesterday. Um, I used tubes, as you can see, they at hand. Um, never far away if I need a top up. So I add water to my tubes. Um, I put quite a bit in uh, each time and then just reactivate them if I want to reuse the same colours and the same palette the, the next day. So we started with Payne's Grey, Cobalt Blue and a little bit of Sienna to put down that base and then the ink we used yesterday we won't be using that again. So what I've added today is a cadmium yellow, a hooker's green, which is quite intense. It's got a bluish tint to it, so be aware of that if you purchase it. And my favorite red to use, I use a permanent rose. Because it's a cooler red, you can push it into a warm, tone and peachy pinks quite easily adding yellows um, and I can bring it back by adding blues and get real warmth out of it as well and because I want that peachy um, pinky flowers today um, I chose my permanent rose red to work with. What you'll also see is that I have mixed myself two green tones so I've done the lighter tone by adding that cadmium yellow to my hooker's green and obviously more yellow than green to that mixture and then I have mixed my darker green for my darker stems to create some pop using that hooker's green and I add it now you would think blue I did not add blue I added sienna to it the warmth in the sienna and because it's a complementary color it tones down the intensity of that hooker's green by quite a lot um, and that's why I mixed the sienna, burnt sienna into it instead of blues. Okay so to start with um, as I said I'd like to push my background back a little more so adding a little bit more water to my paper and it's completely dry it's dried through as I said and now remember I said to you yesterday I Add a bit of a slant to my sky as I work, just to give it a little bit more movement there. And 
There we go. Tie neck right back. We don't want it to get too dark. And I'm just going to work it in. And the reason I want to do this on the horizon line, which is maybe um, strange to do to some, um, because we have those little white flowers popping their heads out here, I want my horizon line to be a little deeper and a little darker in this field so that my little white flowers really pop and stand out. And then I'm working back into the top of my sky and bringing that down to give a little bit of feel of clouds moving through there. And there we go, that's all I needed for now. I'm going to work a little bit into my depth of my valley here, just lifting, did you see a little I take? Lifting a little of that pain spray into the into the valley again, and just bringing that up, and letting that sit. Now, as you can see, clean brush. I have a little towel on the side here to clean my brushes in between. Love the way the light is on this side of my meadow, and I'm just going to work that back into my skyline. And that's the wonder of working with um, good quality papers. You could quite easily do that. Absolutely love the way that, that feels. Now we're going to start bringing in some of these greens and um, lifting them in. Now, I, you can't really see my sketch up, but I can quite clearly see my little uh, flower line and the bigger flowers I have down here. So I won't be working over that a lot. So I'm going to start with my lighter green and I'm just going to start bringing that in, being careful and having a look at where some of my fields flowers are lying. And then I'm just going to work that right in and spread it around, darker to the center maybe, um, only because we're going to be adding some of the darker greens in a minute and uh, moving the light green around with that darker green in mind. And as you can see, this is quite heavy bodied in the center through, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And as we move away, we can have lighter less intense areas so we are just indicating that there's a field that's continuing back there so very translucent layers remembering that lie that we got yesterday and the the stems will be going up with these flowers so Pull them up into that skyline so that they don't look odd when you start bringing them in more solidly. You can already see I'm running out of paint, didn't mix enough. So I'm going to concentrate and just pulling in the areas that I can, working around very carefully where I want to retain some of that pinks time to make some more and that's quite okay gives me time to stand back and have a look at what's happening here and that's why I said in the beginning you know make sure you mix enough of a color to work it through and that's not a bad thing I think as you guys can have a look at how I obtain that shade of green that I'm using at the moment and uh, what I use uh, to mix it through and to bring it into my field. What I've got there, I had a little bit more and um, so here we go. And what I have in my palette is my cadmium kilo and as I said a little bit of that cobalt blue and just bring that, bring that back in. 
petals thin that out as we go just creating a little bit of a darker more intense area so we always have as i said light and, and dark flowing through your foregrounds and backgrounds i'm just moving this along and if you see me going around as i said i don't know if it shows up really on the video i have a couple of little pink flowers sketched out already and we can put in a little bit of that there we go i have a couple of um, these pink flowers sketched out already so i'm actually just working working over them and making sure that i bring bring a little bit of that green up into the background here because all of these have stems and you still want to give the indication that their stems are there although the paint is so light and translucent um, you can hardly see it through the pinks your mind will see and remember that it is there add a little bit more yellow just to finish off this end and once again remember that movement the movement um, the slanting into into your area as your field lies I'm quite happy with that that's lovely I like to bring in a little bit more in the front here which means I'm going to pick up something there we go some paint excellent and that's it that's it it's giving the indication that that field is rolling rolling with flowers and little stems coming up and coming out that will carry more into the top here lovely brush put it down push it down to fan it out to get some of those stems going through there now we have a soft green going through we have a, a fading side where we have the heavier field of flowers obviously um, as the pinks are going to come in there and then over here we have a more open side where I would like to keep it a little bit more vibrant in the yellows and remember your colors that come forward normally yeah, well your colors that come forward in a painting is uh, your warmer colors and we want that to remain the same with this work excellent so I'm going to be moving on to some of the darker green and I'm just going to bring in some stems and um, as you as you remember I mixed the Hansa green with the sienna burnt sienna and that's what I'm going to be using to bring in some of the darker bits where I've got stems going through I have my little calligraphy brush as you see it makes a very very thin little line and brings in these little stems paper's a bit wet and that's okay because we're doing a softer work and as you see I am by doing this placing some of these little flowers right in the setting and I'm just establishing this little field and all of a sudden it will start coming to life and um, do you need a stem for each and every flower absolutely not um, I know that the flowers are heavier towards the side where there's more little yellow flowers and I will therefore um, put a couple more stems in that side and there we go there we go liking the way that looks and going to settle those down by working some of my dark greens in there so that it doesn't look like a spotted streak 
area and we can harmoniously get them all to work together now I want to keep as I said I want to keep that background lighter we'll have more light falling there so I'm not moving that green into the top area where I would say the crest on this hill would be bring in your bigger brush if you want to just to pull that down more and just like that your little petals won't look lonely and remember we're going to be putting in quite a few pink flowers and then we can work in those darker greens behind there even more I don't want to lose some of what we've done there and then we'll have darker bits going in the background here darker bits as the light falls on that crest we'll have dark dark green coming down the hill and it's also going to frame as I said my little flowers that I've sketched up before it's going to frame those beautifully as I bring in the darker green to set them where they are so not much we don't have to work all the way to the edges. Bring some of that forward. As I said, we know it's darker in there as we're going through. Let that light catch on the top there. And we're bringing through swapping brushes because I can bring through quite a lot of this dark green to the front here. And remember to flick your brush out as you indicate in those little stems. Let's work back into the area on the left hand side, bring that right down, and let's pick it up so that the field catches light and then we'll have a darker edge as it comes down the hill on this side again and we just work that green in and around the little petals that you've sketched up before and they very quickly marry each other and see how those little stems have just settled down as we bring that forward into our darker area remembering have a look out the little flowers that you've left out before that I've sketched in before negative painting um, still sets the the tone for those petals as they flowers lie on that side and then you can work out quite dark towards the edge eye lines falling or it's falling out of eye line really it would be quite dark on that side as the sun doesn't get to the focal area still towards the top third as we lift off the masking fluid from those little petals they'll pop in the area that we're drawing our viewers eye to okay I'm quite happy with that I'm going to bring in a couple of more stems and I'm just taking the same paint I'm going to add a little bit more of my burnt sienna to it this time but I feel like I want them to be a little warmer as we move forward here 
and I'm just lifting up these little stems again and it's a field of flowers so yeah we're gonna have a bazillion stems at the end of the day so don't be afraid it won't look too crowded as you move on it will settle right down I know, rightly so, you don't need to give each and every flower a stem. It's just to indicate that these have stems, once again, warmer towards the front here. Some darker, bigger areas, that's fine. As we go around, a bit of painting again to lift some of these indication that there's uh, flowers there. How's that? Looking fantastic. Now I know that um, from my original picture, there's quite a lot of stems in the back there. That will stand out against the backdrop and I'm going to put them in in that lighter tone that we had. I'm going to mix my paint a little thicker because it's quite damp on the side to bring in some of my darker stems into this area. Oh, that's fantastic. I like the way that it's a little lighter over the top. And I'm going to bring in quite a lot more just down the side where I can see my little flowers that are stemless poking out. I'll just bring those in. they will feel at home. Don't forget to cross them over as they would in nature be crisscrossing each other anyway. I'm quite happy with the way that's lying. I want to bring in a little bit more of my yellow and uh, do the stems at the back there in a little bit of a lighter colour. So I've got my Take my pillow out, clean brush, lifting that up. Quite a bit of water in there. Left some of my green. And there we go, straight back to the green that we started with. And this is what they mean by a limited palette as well. You know, you don't need to own hundreds and hundreds of um, different tones of color if you spend a little time learning how to mix your own tones oh it, it's it's wonderful when you do just to be able to pick anything up really and and use it and move with it and get the exact colors that you want for your piece um, they don't always come in a box I have found. Now, once again, moving into darker, just picking up my darker stems in the front here. So, what looked quite sparse is coming together quite nicely. And I can bring some lighter strokes in here. And I'm just filling the space, just remembering to keep some of that empty indicating still moving up towards the top of that hill and the light coming through 
moving around those little petals that I've put there. And that's quite lovely. I like the way that these are lined together at the moment. Quite happy with that. Bringing some of that through. I'm going to move on to my more prominent side and bring in some of these lighter greens towards the front and pop the darker greens behind. Oh, and just look at that, it's so easy to move around my petals that have my masking fluid on to be able to move this. These little daisies have little spiky ends to them and remember that as you move around to give them the opportunity to lie in those spiky ends that they have. I'm very happy with that. I'm going to start putting in some of my little flowers in pink so that we can see where they are. Now I said we're going to really concentrate on letting these little white flowers right on top here shine in this piece. Now we can just find them and stack them. Quite a lot of them. I worked into a pink flower, just lift it off with my trust little sponge that I wet earlier. Bringing down my pinky finger to give me a little bit of levitation so that I don't put my hand down solidly on my paper. Just looking where those tiny little flowers run and bringing in some of these stems that I'll going to show as they're floating around at the top there. I feel like working so gently on this piece, although it's loose, I'm still being quite gentle, quite delicate with it. I've got a couple of really fine little dots out here. A very light touch to show that they are moving through in that direction. And there we go. Quite like that. Moving some of this forward. Again, that negative painting around the flowers that I've put down in pencil earlier, and you can bring in your darker stems into these areas again. Excellent, love the way that's looking. Okay, I'm going to put in some of my pink flowers and my red, and as I said, I'm using that permanent rose. It's very diluted because I'd like to be able to come back and add layers if I if I have to. And remembering daisies, so they point point out. And because we have that pink behind, we're really doing more negative painting than not. So as you see that pink very quickly, you'll get the idea that you're standing in a field. And it's worth looking at uh, the shape of flowers. Some of them are flat. And some of them would be pointing up like this little guy. So when they point up, just put your brush in to that petal and push it out on the outside once again I pull it in on the one end and push it out on the other side let me bring that in closer so you can see once again I pull it in and then push it out to give that feel that it's a daisy now I'm going to carry on filling in my pink flowers and I'll catch
catch up with you when they're done.